Gentlemen, welcome back to my desk. And in this video, it's going to be a little short how to on how to strengthen your push rods. Now, over here we have the Hummer 3D, and I've been absolutely caning the nuts off this model. But what I have noticed, and it's not so obvious now because I've been in bent it round straight, is that my rudder and also my elevator push rod. Because I mounted the servos much forward than, say, somebody else would, say, Ben from uh, our model club, where he's got his servos right down here, is that I've got a very long push rod. And what's been happening is that this push rod has been bending over time. And, of course, that then means that the trim goes out and I don't get as much responsiveness uh, when I bash that rudder really, really hard. Now... The point in this video is just to show you that it's really, really simple to reinforce your push rods. And it's just a little tip which I picked up from the guys just seeing what they've done with their models. Uh, if you find this video helpful, happy days. So the first thing which I'm going to go and do is, is number one, I've been and set the rudder to its home position. So that is the middle trim on the servo. So I am just going to go a little bit careful uh, with its position on the servo so let's get her off and <clears throat> excuse me and I've just moved the servo happy days so I'll have to trim that in later so there's the push rod and yeah it's not the best push rod in the world it is a little bit buckled and bent and also it's quite flexible as well so let's go and resolve that and the tools which we need to do that are actually ironically really really simple and there's one tool which I don't have on here is number one, we need a Sharpie. And the reason why we need a Sharpie is because if we pop that in there, like so, and line that up straight, we need to know our maximum limit. So I'm just gonna put a little black line on there. Uh, and the reason why we do that is because we are gonna go and reinforce this push rod uh, with some carbon fiber tube, uh, sorry, carbon fiber rod. Uh, and we don't want to put it up too far, otherwise we'll have to put loads of trim in, which is hardly ideal. Now, this carbon fibre rod, uh, right now on Banggood, is £2.76. Now, I know a lot of you are uh, outside of the UK, so let me swap that to USD for you. And click save. Uh, $3.60. And these are some offcuts which I've got on here. So, uh, I... I I don't throw away my offcuts because uh, I do get around to using them quite frequently. So I've got one piece there, but it's not long enough. And then the next longest piece I've got there. Oh, get in. All right. So that piece there is exactly long enough. Okay. I couldn't have couldn't worked that out any better. So you'll see that what I'm going to do is I'm going to reinforce this push rod uh, with some carbon fiber rod uh, so that it doesn't bend so easily. Now, that's a bit of a bummer because that means that I can't show you what I do to cut this carbon rod. So let me go and choose a slightly longer piece. And all I would do, imagine that we needed this piece, is that we would line that up on there, leave ourselves a little bit of space, get a marker pen uh, and just mark. Now I'm going to mark this on the end of mine so that we've got a visual reference of where to cut. And then all you do, you don't get, definitely don't get a pair of big nippers and then go crunch, because you'll end up shattering uh, the carbon fiber. Instead, grab a craft knife and then just roll it on your desk. Now you don't need to do that for very long, just to put weakness in there and then I do it if it's a longer piece, you can break it with your hands, or this one's quite short, so I'm using a pair of pliers. And then you just bend it over, and that was like the worst one I have ever done. So let me do that again. This time I do a little bit further up. You just roll it on the desk, like so. Maybe I should roll it for a little bit longer than what I did last time. There we go. And I don't know if you're going to be able to see that, but there is a little line all the way around there. And it should now be there. Look at that. That's how it should have done uh, before I didn't uh, roll it enough. Uh, and anyway, we've caused the weakness on the end. Just bend it over and it breaks. 
Brilliant. Now we need to be able to attach that to our push rod. And the best way of doing that is to use some heat shrink. So I've got loads of this smaller stuff and I want to use three pieces, which that should be enough. So I'm missing a sanding pad. And the reason why you need a sanding pad is because this stuff does come out of the box and it's very, very shiny and we need to create a key for the super glue to go and stick to it. So I'm just getting that sanded up and I'll wipe that off in my jumper. And that's the reason why I've got my jumper on it. Let's move this plane out of the way because it's making things awkward. Uh, and the tip is very simple, is that all I'm gonna do is that if I push that down there, all I'm gonna do is pop a little bit of glue along that edge there. So let me put that near the camera. I'm gonna run a little bit, little bit of CA glue down the end, let me move that off like so. A little bit of CA glue down there. I'm gonna push some heat rod, uh, heat shrink tube on the top, heat it up with a lighter, and then because this is quite a long one, I am actually just gonna pop a third bit, uh, sorry, a second bit in the middle. Come on, get in there fella. In the middle like so. And then I'm gonna pop another bit on the end, and I don't know if you can see, that's the reason why I put the little black mark on there so that I know where the end is. So I know not to put it out that far. And now I've got a super strong push rod, so you can now use cheaper push rods, reinforce them with a carbon rod, and happy days. So I need to go and find what happened to the lighter, which is probably here in my office somewhere. No, can't see it for put in, but I do have a heat gun, so let's turn that on. Brilliant. So all I'm gonna go and do is just pull that one back, undo the super glue, I'm gonna line that up on the end. So can you see that on there? I've just lined that up with the end. Brilliant. And then I'm just gonna hold that still pop a little bit of glue in. In fact, I need that, bring that back a little bit further. Just pop a little bit of glue in there, like so. You don't have to go mental with the glue. It's really, I didn't remember that, it's just to hold everything in place and we're gonna stick the heat gun on that in a moment anyway. And uh, let's do the middle piece as well. Just a little bit of glue, come on. All right, that was obviously too much glue. Good lad, Matt. Matt. Pop that in the middle, and then we've got this end piece to do, so I'm gonna push that all the way up there. Hold that still. A Little bit more glue down there, like so. And push that down. Okay, so I need to go and get the, the hot glue gun, uh, hot gun, hot air gun, and get that going. Oh, and another little tip for you. Uh, super glue, the lids. Before you put the lid back on, if you clean it with a little bit of cloth, or in my case, it's called my hoodie, because I'm wearing my works hoodie at the moment, that's clean the lid out. And then that way, if you keep it stored up right, and you clean the lid every time, you won't end up with one of those lids which are completely gnarly, and you can never get any glue back out because it's all uh, got stuck. So I'm gonna go and get the heat gun, and warm that up a second. Now I'll give you a heads up, it doesn't make the best sound in the world. Alright, that's that done. So you can now see, oh, mind the model, you can now see that we've got the original push rod uh, running below, and then we've got the carbon reinforced push rod, uh, the carbon piece above, so that now when we attach this, so let me get this model somewhere, I'm not trying not to mash my keyboard, somewhere back on my desk, is that if we now push that down in there, pop that in the servo, is 
it's now got loads and loads of extra strength in there. So now when I absolutely ram the uh, rudder on full um, movement, is that that, that push rod is not going to bend. Now with that said, I'm now going to go and do my opposite side. Oh look, you can see on this one, look how bowed that one there's got already. So yeah, a tiny little bit of trimming on that one. Now before I forget, I'm just going to mark up there with the Sharpie pen so I know where, the, where to stop. And I'm going to go and re reinforce that with a spare bit of carbon fiber rod. Uh, and then that way, that means that I will get even better elevator movement as well. So let me pop that out of the way on the floor. There you go, girl. And yeah, those carbon fiber rods, I buy shed loads of them. And I use shed loads of them as well. Not only for putting into models to reinforce them, but also to help me with push rods as well. Uh, and by the way, if you're flying like a Bonsai or a Texumo wing, uh, it's actually more applicable to the Texumo, is that on the Texumo, those wire ones, they're great to get you started, but when you start uh, almost demanding more of the model, do that. Apply some carbon fiber rod with a little bit of heat shrink tube and some CA uh, and put those on top of your, just as I've shown you, on top of the uh, carbon sorry, on top of your push rods, and then you'll get faster, better, more accurate movements because the push rod isn't bending then, whereas this stuff, it really does not like to bend, and it's super cheap. So I hope this little mini tip has been and helped you. Uh, if it has, remember to press the like button, and any feedback from yourself, please do let me know in the comments section underneath this video. I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as I can. So with that said, from myself, Matt, cheerios.